What's up? I'm back. Do not click like or subscribe. <laughs> uh, these are uh, hard to put together because um, wrenching on a car, something you love to do, is not necessarily fun when you gotta bring a camera along with you and constantly record and then and now the phase I'm in of like I have all this footage and I need to edit and put it out there but I, I like the kind of vlog idea um, really just for uh, you know my family and my son like later in life it would be cool for him to kind of see uh, just more detailed look into his dad and his life you know thinking a lot about that these days um, you know kind of what we leave behind and these are just kind of small journals if you will a uh, different way to do a journal um, so I'm excited about that I want to show off uh, my prized possession the E39 M5 so 2002 um, I kind of hinted at you know doing this with the uh, RCF videos so but before I get into all that the the, the BMW um, I wanted to talk about the shop I did a lot of shop updates after I got the RCF out the door, um, really that summer after, and then the work started uh, last year. It's 2022 now, uh, January 2nd, and last year was really the year of the M5. Did a ton of work to it, um, maintenance and mods. Uh, had a little bit of fun in it. Didn't get to have too much fun because I. Uh, uh, found some um, inadequate parts or just had to fix some things nothing big though thankfully um, so yeah let me show you the shop what I did got it uh, up to running speed up to snuff as I say and uh, we'll get going from there Getting the garage up to snuff, uh, the power was the main thing. I was blowing br the breaker um, on the inside of the house time and time again. The house was actually run off, or sorry, the garage was run off a single switch. So if you flip that switch, you lost all power out here, which was <laughs> huge because we got a refrigerator out here. Uh, that would thaw out sometimes if someone flipped that switch and we left for the weekend. So that's really what I wanted to do is to kind of go over like all the updates I did because that allowed me to do a ton of this ton of the work and really it's like quality of life stuff too. Washing the cars, vacuuming the cars out, and then just adding a bunch of power um, to this place, getting extension cords set up, not relying on um, the power inside which is already maxed out. It was on a 20 amp. Um, so let's start. Let me show you what I did. So funny enough, it all started with the shed. I ran a 12 gauge all the way out here into the shed. Wood, this right here. Boom, having light in here was huge. I got the Home Depot LED lights, which I eventually ended up putting in on the inside of the garage. I get made fun of for light, but it's like essential. I gotta be able to see. So uh, these are awesome too. I'm gonna put a link to the all this stuff copper peak it's also a 12 uh gauge was it 40 foot cord reel those are on amazon these are super nice i hate dealing with cords and hoses and stuff so having these on the retractable um reel is amazing so i can run this table saw over here you know full bore it doesn't bog down um i think that's a 15 amp motor Anyway, it has no problem like cutting through some really tough stuff. So Knox and I rented a huge um, jackhammer and broke up the ground right here uh, to run the power and the water, because why not, right? Power was the main goal, and I was like, dude, I need water for the pressure washer and all that. I think it's an eight gauge. It's that big black cable. So that runs all the way to my main panel. The panel's running on 60 amps. I've got a 100 amp in here now, but this really just acts as an on-off switch. And then I got, what, uh, 320s, 315s, and then a 240, 30 amp. So maybe for like a welder or something legit one day. Um, but all these are running basically just to lights and uh, the refrigerator here. And then these cord reels, like I said, like that's a dedicated 20 amp um, circuit right here. This guy, right, with all the, the 12 amp wiring. Um, so it's all legitly run. And it's, you know, this garage as a whole, it's really just like kind of a band aid on band aid. 
and that's fine. I'm okay with it the way I've done it. Like the biggest project I did to date, uh, other than uh, the power and water, was this. This was hugely beneficial, but still, like, uh, you know, there needs to be drywall in here to do it right. There needs to be um, heat AC would be great. Uh, it being bigger, so it just kind of snowballs into like, man, th I don't want this garage at the end of the day. So it's really, I've just kind of come at it at like a budget perspective. And this, it's highly functional. Uh, this is really kind of as clean as it gets, organized as it gets. I'm in and out of here using stuff so much. Uh, just about every weekend I'm, I'm cleaning and organizing this place just to keep it running. So the water, that was the next big thing. Uh, I ran PEX line, tapped it into the kitchen, and ran it out here. So it's coming up uh, somewhere right in here. And uh, through the brick and everything, with that jackhammer allowed me to do all that. But it's also kind of, again, why not run the uh, hot water too? And that's great in the winter when you're washing the cars. Your hands don't get freezing cold. Um, really not necessary, but uh, it's a really nice perk. I've got this uh, sort of cheap system with the, uh, I think they're aquarium filters. Maybe that helps with water spots. That's what I was told, I don't know. Again, uh, it's not totally dialed in, but uh, kind of just, again, the ethos. Here's the Sunjo. Uh, it works, it's great. The only thing I need right now is a, a hose reel uh, to keep that madness in check. It'd be great and mount that somewhere down here. But all this is just scrap wood, you know, like all this, it's all just, you know, this real quick DIY stuff. Um, but it works. Uh, this was really the first goal is to get this, because I hated getting all this stuff out. I was having to run water. You can see this hose here. It's all the way over there on the other side of the house. So you have to get the hose out, hook all this up. It was such an endeavor just to wash the cars with the pressure washer. So getting all this fixed in place, you know, all I have to do is turn it on and then turn the water on. Boom, I'm ready to go. Start pressure washing immediately. These are all on quick release, so I can change. Uh, just run straight from the tap, or you can run through here if you want the um, filtration system. So super convenient. I still, <laughs> it's still a chore for me to wash the cars, but I'll say, Kind of like a not really an impulse but something i wasn't totally planning on was this and this thing is better than the pressure washer mounted um just day to day like cleaning in and out with kids and just keeping your car clean this has been huge this is also running on a dedicated uh 12 gauge wire uh, i think yeah this is the same wire that runs out so this is split between the the shed and the this guy um Super recommended as much as I hate uh, dealing with hoses and cords. That's kind of what fell into my hatred of the wet uh, Dry vac. I hated that thing. You know as you're cleaning out the car or whatever um, The things falling behind you and you're like just it's so annoying with the hose and the, the um, Power cord and it inadvertently like runs into the car too as you're trying to vacuum the damn car So uh, this is awesome I would do that again a hundred times over before I did the pressure washer. That's really just kind of a, a luxury. So after I did all that, the next thing was the lights. I had a bunch of um, leftover lights from the previous owner, uh, the fluorescent tubes. So I got everything uh, at Home Depot, uh, these LED lights, strung them all together. These are great. Uh, you can turn them off individually, like for this one in front of the TV, I'll turn off. Um, but they're all on a switch back there, uh, single switch. You can run a bunch of these on, um, like they all string together, like you can kind of daisy chain them together. But one other thing I did was I tucked them up in between the rafters. So that's a nice thing about not having a, a ceiling here is that you know I can really kind of hide these lights up in the rafters so they're never going to get hit because um, they're just up and out of the way. What else? I added these fans at the same time too. These are nice in the summer. It just gets unbearable. Um, new air fans. Got these at Home Depot as well. Pull chain. They, they put a bunch, pull, push a bunch of air, uh, especially working out with the squat rack. Uh, having these on is, is super nice. You know, in the summer it just blows hot air, but they're better than not having them. Uh, doing all the electrical work, I did the uh, upgraded the sound systems. This is all my dad's old equipment. So I got this, uh, inherited this, 
uh, Pioneer Elite. This is a boss, like home theater system, but it's just running a um, sub and some of these super nice Bauer and Wilkins speakers. Super impressed with these. The system will crank. And as you know, once you go sub, you just can never go back. Having a sub is so valuable for listening to music and annoying your neighbors. That thing's awesome. What is it? Is it a 10 or a 12? I don't know. This thing kicks. It's, it's, I think it's a 12. Before the pandemic, I got the squat rack, if y'all care. Um, it was uh, at Walmart, so I, I kind of lucked out because you remember early pandemic, like it was impossible to get weights or any kind of workout equipment. So having this in here with these mats, these mats are probably right next to the vacuum. And my favorite um, just takes so much um, discomfort out of walking on a concrete floor. Uh, these are from Walmart. Also, these are another pro tip right here. Slide and taking these out individually. You know, slide them under the car whenever you're working on them. On your back. These are super nice. Or if you're on your knees, uh, save your knees. So keep some as individual little pieces. But I ended up buying most of the weight equipment early on, but then bought these not too long ago. These are super cool. Uh, space saving. Again, like I'm so strapped for space in here. You know, I've got it in front of the fridge. Um, I probably could spend, uh, you know, weeks and months just trying to organize what I have. But this may have been the elephant in the room, the CNC table covered in stuff. <laughs> but I actually ended up using this as well. Again, having proper power out here allowed me to, you know, play with all these toys. So I did a, several projects on this this year. Uh, hopefully I can do some more. But this thing's a ton of fun. Hey, so after I made that video, I was like disgusted at where the... Um stuff was right so these weights were right in front of the um, refrigerator i was like oh this is insane this can't happen um so i pulled up a couple of these tiles i was able to scooch this over several inches put the weights tuck them in here like duh right that makes sense and then um i took the table it's actually outside uh, with some stuff on it but i took the cnc machine off removed the stuff that was up here and since i don't use this very often it made sense to kind of store this up here um anyway it's it's now like I've got the room here much better than before actually for good reason too for another car I'm just gonna leave you with this but uh, this will probably be the next series all right that's all for the shop update so the next episode is gonna be I had really fun at the Jayzilla uh, good time Emporium at Barber the proving grounds uh, low pressure event, low speed event, but really good at car control. I almost equated it to like doing a couple mods and then you want to go test it out. It was a perfect event for that. Um, not a full blown track day, um, but really good kind of autocross style event uh, to do some things. I actually tested the Dynan rear sway bar. Um, so the next video will begin with that, kind of my first mods. And then my big plunge into finding the guru uh, in Orlando, McHale, and all that transpired after that. So stay tuned for the next episode. It really gets uh, E39 M5, S62 B50 heavy. 